Hey there. It's me again, Pastor Renee. Maybe you're getting sick of me saying that. I should work on my intro, huh? Oh, well, anyway. i got to intro myself. Anyway, hi. <laughs> it is good to be here with you and to share the Word of God. And today our scripture reading is really short. I bet, you know, the whole event is long, so I invite you to read, you know, the second chapter of Acts to get a full grasp of what was going on that day. But I'm just going to be reading, you know, verses 1 through 4. And so, here we are. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And there's where I'm going to end. So this is the word of God for the people of God. That's you. Thanks be to God. That's the Spirit. We have all either said that expression or heard someone say it as they were offering, you know, words of encouragement to someone. When someone says that's a spirit to you, it's an expression of like approval of your attitude or your action. Like if you say, we haven't come this far to give up now, and then someone gives you that response, that's the spirit. It means yes. We are in this together, right? The Spirit is to be of one mind, just as the Holy Spirit is of one mind with the Father and the Son. We, as believers, are also called to be of one Spirit as we deepen our faith and become more like Jesus by living our lives through the power of the Holy Spirit. And did you know that many faith traditions believe in the Holy Spirit? We probably realize that Judaism uh, believes in the Holy Spirit. They, they know it as the Holy Ghost, which kind of scared me as a child to hear it referred to as that, but I got over it. Anyway, um, but in Judaism, they believe that the Holy Ghost is the divine force quality, and influence of God over the universe or his creatures. In Islam, the Holy Spirit acts as an agent of divine action or communication. In the Baha'i faith, the Holy Spirit is seen as the intermediary between God and man and the outpouring grace of God and the radiant rays that emanate from his manifestation. Cool. And finally, you probably already know, in Nicene Christianity, that's us, the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity along with God the Father and God the Son. God the Holy Spirit is what dwells within believers giving guidance and comfort and strength. It develops gifts within us that vary from one person to another, like the utterance of wisdom, the utterance of knowledge, faith, healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discernment of spirits, various kinds of tongues, and the interpretation of tongues. You'll also remember from a couple of weeks ago that the Holy Spirit helps us develop the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the fruits of a life lived in faith in our redemption through Jesus Christ. This is why Pentecost is such a big deal. We celebrate Pentecost as the birth of 
the church because there's a lot to celebrate when the third person of the Trinity comes to earth to dwell within the souls of believers. Just as the disciples experienced what was like tongues of fire resting on them, when the Holy Spirit, when we welcome it into our soul, and it lights a fire within us, God's presence becomes unquestionable. Like the disciples, we begin to see things through God's eyes. We realize the importance of sharing His love and the great news of Jesus Christ. Now on that day of Pentecost, all the noise and commotion caused by the arrival of the Holy Spirit drew an enormous crowd. And people were milling around saying, what's going on? And so the Apostle Peter grasped the opportunity and shared the gospel of Jesus with those who gathered. He told them how the prophet Joel had predicted the gift of the Holy Spirit would be given to all people. He told about Jesus being wrongfully put to death and then being resurrected from the dead. He told of how Jesus ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of God as Lord and Messiah. And those who welcomed his message were baptized that day. And that day, about 3,000 people were added to their number. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship with one another and the breaking of bread and praying together. That's the Spirit. That day, the apostles spoke to people who were desperate for salvation, desperate for peace, desperate for the love of God. And they gave themselves over to Christ so that they may be filled with the Holy Spirit and share in his truth. Folks, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but the people of our communities today are just as desperate for salvation, peace, and the love of God as the people that were in Jerusalem that day many centuries ago. And it's up to us to share that message with them. You know, if everyone who needed to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ were to join us in worship on Sunday mornings, there wouldn't be enough room for them. We'd have to find a bigger venue. We'd have to find this big arena to call our sanctuary and consecrate it as our new home. Wouldn't that be a wonderful problem to have for the church today? Ah, but they aren't here yet. We need to gather them in. Maybe we need to make a huge commotion, like on the day of Pentecost. So much that it would be impossible to ignore the moving of the Spirit. I'm willing to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. How about you? For now, let's not stop praying for the future of the church and inviting our friends to join us in, in watching these sermon videos and join us in worship in actual sanctuaries of our churches. And also... The next time you encourage someone by saying, that's the Spirit, give thanks to God for allowing His Spirit to dwell not only within you, but also within all believers who call Jesus their Savior. Thanks be to God. Give Him all praise and glory. Amen.